And the Irish have been on my mind a lot this year, especially in April when we celebrated the 20th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. I remember so clearly that cold winter night in 1995 when Bill and I joined thousands of people in front of the Belfast City Hall for the lighting of the Christmas tree. Catholics and Protestants alike came to that spot from their deeply divided neighborhoods. They brought with them a sense of hope and maybe even a little bit of optimism. I can still picture the faces of the young people in the crowd, students there with friends, little children lifted onto their father's shoulders. It was on that first visit that I met some of the women who would go on to help bring an end to the troubles. Mothers and activists who came together over cups of tea, as well as those who formed a coalition and claimed a formal seat at the negotiating table. To this day, the Good Friday Agreement stands not only as a framework for shared understanding here in Ireland, but as an example for the rest of the world about what's possible when citizens come together to demand peace and then work to preserve it. As the Brexit debate rages on, I continue to believe in the value of the European Union and of a Europe that is whole, free, and at peace. So no matter the outcome of the ongoing discussions, Brexit should not be allowed to undermine the peace that people voted for, fought for, and some even died for.